Hello, welcome to the Real Estate of Mind Show. We're your hosts, Glenn and Amber. Hey, everybody. We uh, help everyday people create wealth through real estate investing. We have a great show that has a very hot topic today. Hiring contractors. Everybody wants to know. Yeah, everybody wants to know. How do you find contractors? That seems to be one of the hardest parts about this business is hiring the right contractor for the job. So we're going to talk about not only how, how to hire the right contractor, but that that contractor needs to be what we refer to as an MRA. That means mature, responsible adult. Good luck. <laughs> Any contractors watch this, we're going to get angry, but we're, you know, we have, our experience is that we have done hundreds of renovations, dealt with probably, I want to say in the high hundreds, if not thousands of contractors, if you want to lump contractors, subcontractors, sub subcontractors, brother-in-laws, you know, all this, all this stuff that goes on with that. There's a ton of people that we've had to manage. So we've been through a lot. There are some good, but by and large, it's very difficult to find a good contractor at the price points that we have to work at and the timelines we have to work right. at. Right. You know, at our home flipping workshops, we usually always have a handful of contractors in the room. You know, they, they want to learn how to flip houses. And I tell them right up front, I love you. I hate you. <laughs> I just have to like this constant love hate relationship with the guys yeah. because they do get the job done. You know, and you don't want to be breaking your back. We teach not to do the work yourself yep. when you're flipping no, the house. No, it's not smart to do it yourself. Um, we, you know, so contractors are a means to an end, but they can be a pain in the ever loving ass. So yeah. we're gonna we're gonna give you some tips on how to hire the right ones from the get go, um, so that you minimize. So I want to set set the tone for this <clears> a little bit because if you've watched other podcasts, maybe it's your first time you've ever seen us, and you wonder who the hell we are, but. In our business with doing over 600 deals, we, and maybe it's getting closer to seven now, um, in the renovation world, I was never the project manager. You know, I think we, at, at, at the beginning, we both kind of did it. And then as our roles start, as our business started to grow and we had to define our roles, Amber's role was the project manager. She's the one that hired contractors, fired contractors. I was there as a backup and a support. And we've talked about that in other podcasts, by, by all means, listen to them. But, she was the one really in the field doing that. So it's, it's sort of a role reversal. People always thought she sold the houses and did the negotiating. I did that and the business side of things and she handled the day-to-day -day with the contractor. So, And I was actually much tougher on the contractors than Glenn was. Oh, way tougher. They would, they would go to him, Amber's not paying me because you, the work's not done. You know, I have a real strict rule that, you know, you have to do the work and then I'll pay you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they'd always go to him and try to, you know, cry him a sob story and he'd give in sometimes. <laughs> well, not all the way. I, I my, my my answer was, are you going to sleep with me tonight? Because I'm going home with her. So I just, just so we're clear, I want to make sure I have to live with her. I don't have to live with you. So, but we're always trying to get the job done. There's, and I think, like Amber said, they, you know, they are a means to an end. You have to have contractors. And we've learned a lot of valuable lessons along the way. I think we'll talk about it as we go. So yep. here's kind of some steps on how you can hire the best contractor for you for the job. So, so how do you find the best one? Um, referrals are definitely always going to be really high on that list. Yeah. You know, if you can... It, find somebody that you know or did work on your own house or your mom's house or your sister's house. You know, a referral is always great because it's first-hand knowledge that that person did a good job, they did what they said they were going to do, they followed through. How about family? That jazz. We, didn't, we didn't plan this, but how about family? Family to be your contractor? Yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't do it. You know, I don't know it though. It depends. Or would I? She'll let me know what well, my answer okay, is. Okay, so let's say let's say it's a father son that are, or a father daughter well, they're doing a flip and they're going in if they're and part, as partners. Yeah, they're partners. That's different. I'm saying if you so so your brother's a contractor or your your best friend's a contractor or you know whatever it is you if if that's the case it can get sticky. That yeah, can get sticky. If I think you're going into it as a partnership. I think a good rule of thumb is never hire anybody you can't fire. Right. If you never hire anybody, you can't fire. I think if you stick by that rule of thumb, because right. you can do a st tough situation <coughs> and you have to have Thanksgiving dinner or a birthday dinner coming up with that person, that's going to be tough. Or you're not happy with the quality of work or they think you're not paying them enough. Or, or they yeah. take advantage because they know your family. <coughs> they know they can be a little more, or they try and be a little more loosey-goosey with you and you can't be tough. So again, if you can't fire somebody, don't hire them. Yeah. Sorry, I keep coughing too. I just got over the flu. And you should be. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we've, been, another... we've been down for the count for a week with the flu. Oh, two two cool. weeks it's been. So I'm it's drinking been... my apple cider vinegar elderberry tonic right now. <laughs> it doesn't taste the best, but I think it's good for me. So what is that? Um, you want to try it? Sure. Let's go ahead. You continue on while I try your so whatever the hell gonna this is. He's going to make a really sour face in a minute. So make sure you look at him. <laughs> All right. Apple cider vinegar. There you go. All right. So. Um, 
a really good resource that we found is go to your supply stores, go to Home Depot, go to Lowe's, ask the pro desk, you know, who do you know that's a good contractor? They aren't going to have firsthand knowledge. They're not going to know what kind of work that contractor does, but they're going to want know the ones that are more serious. Go early in the morning too to find the contractors. Yeah, don't go at ten o'clock or yeah. eleven o'clock when they're in there hanging out with other crew doing right. their thing. Yeah, go in the middle of the day. You're going to find the guys that like to be in there in the middle of the day, and you need those guys on your job site. So if yeah. you go early in the morning, those are the guys that are more serious that that have a better crew because you know they're there early in the morning picking up their stuff and getting their day started off right. It, they're not the ones that get to the job site, hang around, have some coffee. Oh, what are we gonna do today? Oh, we need this and that and the other from Home Depot. Let me go make a Home Depot run, you know, and then they're at Home Depot for, you know, they think they're gonna be there for half an hour and two hours later they're finally stumbling back into the job site. Well, if they meet people in the job or they do another estimate while they're there, they bump they into somebody, somebody else they know or whatever. Or they see somebody they know or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, the boss is the one that usually goes to Home Depot. So while the other guys are on the job site and they're supposed to be working. Cats away, you know, mice will play, right? They're calling their girlfriends, they're outside having cigarettes, you know. I can feel contractors fuming right now. It doesn't yeah. happen with me. Well, I hate to tell but you. that's happens where, with a lot. We've been to a lot of, we've been to a, more job sites than most people. We've, we've done over 600 houses. Yeah, so, so every time we go This to is a, not our first rodeo. We go, to a, <laughs> we go to a job site, we see people sitting around, a lot of times the boss isn't there. Right. So they're just, that's just kind of the nature of the beast, not the way it works. So, so, but, you, so I think we're talking about the bad side. So the good side is you want to find people that have you know if their truck looks good if they have they look good in the morning they're they show up um you know ask them to go to the, one of the job sites even when you're there say what any jobs you're working on right now i could just pop by any vacant houses you're working on you, you can go by a site and see is the site clean is it neat is it tight do their guys look good when they pull back in is everybody outside smoking and sitting around like you know on the on the, the porch just hanging around doing nothing or are they are they working hard so you can you can really test them out and use some techniques to Weed out the bad ones and find the good ones. Because there there are good ones. There are good contractors out there. But you, it's like dating. You really have to weed through the crap to find the good yep. ones. Yep. Right? And there's different things. I just thought of this too. There's different things you want to look for in different kind of crews. Like we usually have, depending on the scope of the work on the job. Are you going to pick stuff off me like a monkey? What are you doing? A little something in your eye there. Just um, clean her off a little bit. <laughs> Thank you, honey. Um... <laughs> You know, there's different crews. You know, we usually have an inside crew and an outside crew. Right. Because in, in the Northeast, you know, it's really hard to do work <coughs> outside this time of year. Right now it's, um, what month is it? February. It's middle so, of winter. You know, it's, That's it's all we know. It's snowing outside right now. So those outside crews, the guys that typically do your roofing, siding, windows, they're wanting to do inside work. Yeah, That's But that true. doesn't mean they're good at it. Yeah, right. We're, we're yeah. going to talk about that in a yeah. minute. Yeah. Um, but you have to be careful of that. And... The point I wanted to make with that, though, is sometimes the outside crews can be a little rougher than the inside crews, too. Yeah. You know, a lot of the roofers are, you know, a lot of them are... Felons. <laughs> felons. <laughs> to be Ex -felons. honest. Yep. Current felons. Um, hard to say. You know, but that doesn't mean they're not nice people and they get the job done. And as long as, like, we, we, just, have, we just, have a roofer crew they that... They just murdered a couple of people. Big deal. It's not that they're mean people. It doesn't mean no, they're bad. No, they just ran drugs or something. Yeah, you know, they're yeah, not, something not like necessarily that. murderers. Sure, but, why not? Um... But we have a we have a roofer that has been with us since very early very on. First job. Um, and second, second job. He, you know, he's really strict with his guys, and they are those type of guys. But they do a great job. They leave a clean. They they are in. They are out. They leave a clean job site. Yep. They're great. Yeah. Um. So you know you're gonna find different types of people for the different kinds of work you need done as well. So go early in the morning to Home Depot, to Lowe's, to your supply stores, um, and find those contractors, because that's that's a really good source. You can always place a Facebook ad or you a can, Craigslist if you, ad, too. Now, if you do the Facebook ad, that leads <coughs> us to number two, and number two is you want to interview them. Right. So you don't want them to interview you, you want to interview them. Posture is so important when you're meeting a contractor for the first time. I'm not saying posture like be a jerk, but you, you need to have posture, meaning that you need to let them know that it's your business, right? You don't have to go and be an, it's my business and you're gonna listen to me during this interview. That's not how you have to do it. No, you wanna try to have a mutual respect with the contractor, you know, be, right. because if that's not there, then everything, if you if you meet somebody and they're just like cocky, yeah, I can do this and that and the other, and you know, it, it, the cocky guys aren't gonna last. No, so I always say how a relationship starts is how it's gonna be. So if you can, you know, if you can remember that when you're going in and be postured, meaning go with a plan. Here's my, here's my plan. Here's what I want to have done. Here's my budget, right? We, when we help our students put together a scope of work, uh, those students then say, okay, well, here's my scope of work. Here's what I do. Here's my contract. Here's my budget. And you know, you, if someone says, well, I don't use a contract, say, I'm sorry, I do. That's how you stay postured. So if you want to work for us, you know, we have insurance people, I have partners I work with, whoever you want to say it. So listen, I need you to 
take a look at this contract because you can't work with us without a contract and without insurance and all those things. So I think the, the stronger you can be during the interview process and really put, make, them, make them earn the business. If you make them earn the business, again, how relationship starts is how it's going to be. They'll want to keep earning more of your business and they'll, they'll go out of their way to be nice to you. Where if you say, I'm not really sure. Um, I, I don't know what my budget is and this, this is my first flip and I, I don't know. You're going to get taken advantage of. They're going to gonna smell yeah. blood in the water like a shark. And that's just, it's just a fact of life. And so some of you might be rolling your eyes now saying, ah, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, we do. We, we have the experience to prove that if you act naive, that most contractors will take advantage. Even if they say they want to help you, over time, if they're helping, helping, they, you, you get too much in bed with them like that, you're going to get hurt. You're going to yeah. get burned. And if you're a good contractor, that's great. That's awesome. Don't change. We need you guys to help change the industry as a whole. And if you're, you know, if, if we're saying things that resonate with you, you're going, yeah, you know, you're kind of pissing me off, but I can, I, I am kind of like yeah, that. You some you know other, con you know. <clears throat> yeah. You some other, con go ahead. I'm sorry. But, but change, you know, get better. Change the perception of contractors. Help do that. <laughs> We've had to change the perception of flippers in our area. We have. Flippers had a really bad connotation when we first started. Yeah. And well, yeah. We've always believed that you can do it with honesty, character, and, character, and integrity. Yeah. And we never cob anything. We never hide anything. Um, we c find the least expensive solution to fix the problem in the right way. But we believe that you can do a quality renovation. In in your area you have to look and see if you have to have someone who's licensed right so that's really, during the interview process you want to say listen <clears throat> are you licensed now in certain states new york which if you're from new york you'll tell you that right now in new york they spend every day learning how to come up with more laws that's what they do in new york just every day it's like let's make more laws today it's whatever don't even get me going on laws in new york but there's no there's no law or no license required to be a contractor any idiot can slap a magnet on his car and call himself a contractor yeah or their there, there motorcycle, trades or a and moped. Certain, Doesn't right. matter what it is. They show up on one bicycle. Doesn't matter. There are matter. certain trades in certain cities that require, you know, maybe right. plumbing or electrical to be licensed, but in a lot of cities, it's not. Yeah. You can also, one of the things you can do in this process too, guys, when you're interviewing is go check with your local code enforcement. You remember in the early days, we, we were talking to our oh code enforcer and we'd say, listen, what do you think about this guy? And they know. Yeah. If those people have been around that town, they'll know if they try and skirt getting permits or if they do bad work. So I'm thinking about the house that we hired the contractor. So I know what you're thinking. <laughs> if their price is really low, be careful. Yes. Be careful because that's not always better. Matter of fact, it's probably Rarely not. is it better, yeah. So we did a house early on. It was probably our fourth house. And we had to have the whole house sided. It was a good size house, probably a 1,700 square foot house, two story. Yep. Looking back, it's probably gonna, it would normally cost, let's say $10,000 to side that house. I would agree. Now, we had a contractor say, give me a price. And I said, you don't wanna hear my price. And I remember him saying, give me a price. And I said, okay, $4,000. He said, done. I said, materials and labor? Yep, done. So we're, we were naive and we said, fine. So they also were building a deck at the time. Yeah. And the building inspector came out and said, Glenn, do you see what he's doing with that deck? He's lying to you. In other words, you're supposed to dig like an eight foot pier to-, to um, With the sauna tubes. The sauna tubes yeah. to put your, to put your uh, footing in for your deck. And he said, see how it's cut in half? He just does half. He's lying to you. He's not doing the right work. He said, plus he's using penny nails. Penny he, nails. Should be, he should be using screws. <laughs> They're going to rust out said, in one season. He said, he, he, that guy couldn't be more lost. Get him off your job. They put the siding up and the siding was never done right. It was always, uh, we drive by that house. Been 10 years, it's still on there, but I was always Every windstorm. Every windstorm, <laughs> we're thinking, oh my God, I hope it doesn't come off there because we hired the wrong contractor. <coughs> but turns out he was stealing material from Home Depot. Turns out that's what he was doing. He was stealing, stealing out the front door and then returning things, getting store credit and then going back and and uh, buying ma buying material with stolen stuff. So he was getting material for nothing. So long story short though, this this building we inspector- We did not know that at the time. No. We found that out later. Oh no, we found out, we gently just fired him. We just said, you know what, we're gonna finish the job ourselves. We, we, I don't forget what we said, but we, we found out they were criminals and we were like, oh my God. So we just sort of gently got out of that situation. That's been a decade ago. Yeah. But the, the building inspector, had we not talked to the building inspector, I mean, you know, we didn't know what we didn't know. I remember, I remember going, We were pretty great. Glenn, that guy is lost. He doesn't know what he's doing. Get these guys off your job. And so the building inspector was looking out for us. So I think that's really important. When you're interviewing, make sure that you do that as well. Yep. So anyways, so that leads to the next thing. We want to look for three qualities, and Amber does this the best, so I'm going to let her take over. So three qualities you want in a contractor. I wonder if you can guess what they are. So it, this kind of has a funny story to it because we were inter interviewing a contractor at one point, and he actually said this to us. 
Now, yeah. Yeah. 10 years later, maybe not quite 10 years, he's now our project manager. He works for us. He's a full-time employee <laughs> for our company. <laughs> he, yeah. he got tired of swinging a hammer and being a contractor, so he's now our project manager. But he said, you're going to want to look for three things. And these are in no particular order because they're all important. Good budget, good timeline, and good quality. Can I say it? Pick two. <laughs> you'll never get all three. You'll <laughs> never get all three. We learned that the hard way over the years. You'll never get all three, though. If you have good timeline and good quality, then the budget's not going to be good. If you have good budget and good quality, then you know it's going to take the contractor a long time to get it done. The timeline's going to be shot. So you got to pick you know, which two are best for you. And sometimes it takes hiring somebody to figure out what those are. And sometimes you can live with that. You know, Sometimes if you yeah. know, you know, I'm willing to hold on to this house a little bit longer because this guy is really good. I need the quality on this house to be spot on. I don't mind if it takes a month or two longer. So you know, pick, pick the top two qualities you want and figure out what contractors are good at that. Um, I don't think we've ever had a case where we've had all three. No, you, you don't. It's I mean, just not, it's not, it's just something you're never going to have. No. No, no matter what you do, ever. you're never going to have it. No. <laughs> so just prepare yourself for that going in. So, yep. so <coughs> number, number, I don't know what number we're on, but make sure they're legit. So that means, you know, make sure they have the right kind of insurance in place. You know, in New York, we have to have workers comp. We have to have liability. You know, check with your local state and figure out what you need to have in your state. Make sure they have a crew. You know, if it's one or two guys, and a two-guy crew might be okay on some jobs. We've had some good two-guy crew because they work hard right. so, sometimes. Right. <coughs> um, it's not the job you're doing, too. It does. It depends on the scope of work. Yeah. So, but you don't want just one guy. You know, you want two, I'd say two to six guys on most crews, inside oh. crews, and then the same thing holds true for an outside crew. If you have a two-man crew, we've had two-man crews trying to do siding on a house. They, the price might be good. It'll take them bloody forever. Yeah, It'll weeks. take them forever to do even two guys on a roof. You have to have four or six guys to bang that out. And they get burned out too. You know, they they're do. on a, on one job for so long, and then you know they thought they'd be done with it before then. So then they start getting burned out and not working as fast, and it's just a vicious cycle. So Talk about insurance for a second. So in, <coughs> you have to find out what your state is. In our state, it's very tricky. In New York State, it's very tricky because in New York State, again, the state full of nothing but laws. Um, can you tell how much I like it? Um, in New York State, you, as a company, because we are a company, so our company, Signature Bars, is a, is a company, and we have employees that work for us. So because of that, we, we have to, by law, have workman's comp uh, insurance. So we have a policy for our, for our employees. Because we have workman's comp, anyone who works for us needs to also have workman's comp. Because if they don't have workman's comp, we have to pay their premium at the end of the year through an audit. So without confusing you to death, it's not an insurance um, podcast. podcast today, but without confusing you, if they're a one-man operation, by law, they don't have to have workman's comp in New York State. There's a loophole in the system. But I still have to pay for their workman's comp, so it's very confusing. You have to just understand what state you're in and this what the laws boring. are. Can we move on? <laughs> I don't like her today. <laughs> it's just so we're clear. We've been cooped up together for two weeks with the flu, so pretty soon we may just kill each other. Might be it. So, all right. So, so I'm sorry I was boring you <laughs> with the details of insurance, but anywho, it's a necessary I'm losing, evil. I'm losing interest. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you're the main thing we're really curious about. I want you to be happy. To hell with our, our viewers. I want you to be happy. That's certainly my goal as a podcast. <laughs> so, you want to look for their um, skill set, you know, what type of work are they good at? We mentioned that earlier. If they're an outside crew, stick to the outside work. If they're an inside crew, stick to the inside work. Um, hire people for their specialty. So, let me talk about this for a minute. In the beginning, we tried, be this, <clears throat> we tried this both ways. So what we have found is it's much better to hire like a general contractor that handles hiring any subs that he needs. Because if you're trying to hire a, a GC to, or a, a contractor to do the construction part of it, another guy to do the painting, another guy to refinish the hardwood floors, another guy to do the carpet, another guy to do electrical, another guy to do plumbing, you are literally doing nothing but an, an running an adult daycare. It's a blame and game. Yes, blame game. I didn't do exactly it. That's exactly what happens. Yeah. You know, the, the painter gets done and then the electrician had to cut a hole in the wall because there's, you know, a problem behind it. And then the painter, you know, wants to back charge you again because he has to come back and touch up and yeah. skim coat and blah, 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 blah. They do nothing but blame each other and sometimes the you can't. The whole job. Yeah. So it ends up costing you a lot more money and oh my God, the headache. Yeah. Just, just don't do it. Hire one GC that then hires all the subs that he needs under him. And there might be a couple exceptions, you know, if you need to, like we, we d would sub out the hardwood floor sometimes, but even that I prefer the GC to just do because, I'll give you an example. So <laughs> you- <laughs> we, we have so many examples, it's hard to pick one, but- I'll, I'll give you two examples <clears throat> actually. So 
the contractor gets done, or he's supposed to be done, so you schedule the hardwood floor guy to be there on Monday because, you know, contractor's going to be done with his work on Friday. Friday comes along, contractor's not done. I'm not going to be ready for him on Monday. You know, can you reschedule him for Wednesday? So then you're on the phone having to reschedule him for Wednesday, and then he's still not done on Wednesday, so you have to reschedule him again. And then now he's busy on another job, and he can't get to the job. So, you know, that's dragging out the job itself, and you've had all these phone calls and scheduling and this all that. This is kind of boring. Can we move along? <laughs> So the other thing is, um, <clears throat> floor guy comes in, <clears throat> he slops polyurethane and gets it all over the baseboard trim. We've had it on the walls. We've had it on the freaking ceiling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. In houses. Yes. That's right. Remember that house? Yeah. I think it was in Glendale. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. Like a, like a <clears throat> handprint of polyurethane. One uh, of the guys was a big, huge, six foot tall guy, yeah. and he must have like rested his hand on the ceiling. Of course, they say the it's wall. not me. Yeah. Okay. Really? really? The, like golden, yeah. you know, handprint looks like polyurethane, smells like yeah. polyurethane. That's not yours? Not okay. you. This is, this is random. Same size as your hand. Yeah, random. You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, you know, so that's all slopped all over it the is. place. And then you have to hire the painter to come back in and touch up. So it's just better to hire a GC to kind of handle all of that stuff for you. Agreed. So this is a good one. Hire slow and fire fast. Trust your gut. Is that enough said on that one? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, pretty much on that one. Yeah, I think I think when you, you know, the higher slow part means take your time. It, even though you want your job to start tomorrow, sometimes it's better to wait two and even three weeks to find the right person to get the job started. Because if you start right away with the wrong person, you will pay. It will be a pain in the butt. And when you know it's time to go, get rid of them. Yeah. Once, your, once your gut starts to say, maybe this is not a good fit anymore. And you'll question yourself because you'll have a thousand things going through your head like, how am I gonna find somebody else? I have to get this job done. I already owe him money. What if he puts a lien on my house? Oh my gosh, he's you know, he's already I'm into him for this much and I can't do it now, and maybe he's my brother in law, or you know, whatever it might be. Again, if if you need to fire somebody, you need to fire him fast and be done with it. Because if you don't and drag it out, you ninety nine point nine percent of the time are going to lose. Yeah. If you drag that out, the relationship will get worse and worse, and it will only get worse. It won't get better. Because as you get towards the end of the job, you start running out of money and you feel like you're not getting the work done and they feel like they're not getting paid and everybody's pissed off everybody, that job will suffer and you will not make the money you're supposed to make on it. So when you know it's time to go, get rid of them. Yeah, you, and, you'll pay in <clears> time, <throat> money, emotional, sanity, everything. Oh, the, the headache alone. And Plus all the conversations you'll have in the car by yourself, just driving along, like what you're going to say, and then you get to the job and don't say it, right? Because you, just, and we understand, like you don't want to fire somebody because you're thinking, I don't want to, yeah, it's a pain. My to, job, yeah, done. and it's a pain to hire somebody new because they it is. they can't just like come in on day one and pick up where the other guy left off. They have to figure out where they were, and you know every contractor does things a little bit differently. So you know it, it it is definitely a pain to have to fire someone and hire someone new. But when, like Glenn said, when you know, you know, and it's time to go. But before you know, you know it's important to try to find resolution, right? I think it's yeah. really important during that process to go in and say, we got a problem. And even have a, even have a sit down off the job site. If they are sitting around in front of their crew and you start to get in their face about it. It's a pride thing. That's, yeah, it's a pride thing with anybody. I mean, if, you were, if someone's coming at you at your workplace, you're gonna put your chest out more and wanna fight more. And maybe that's not gonna happen. So maybe you meet them off site. Have them come to your office on your turf. Or maybe you meet out at a restaurant and say, Let's have uh, let's have a quick cup of coffee. How can we figure out how to make this work? Yeah, for, make it a win-win for both yeah. of us. I would say I don't think you're happy. We're not happy. Let's try and find a way through this so we can both do this job. Maybe we do work after this. Maybe we don't. But for now, we're both under. I know you're a man of integrity. I know you want to get the job done. Or woman. Most of the time it's men contractors. But you say I'm the same kind of person. I want to get through this. I want to. I want to walk away feeling good about each other, not bad. But you may have to have that mature conversation to get yourself to a better place. Remember, lose the battle to win the war, but always seek resolution before you just run to the fire. It's not like Donald Trump where you say, you're fired. You know, every time they turn around, that's not what you're supposed to do. What you're supposed to do is try and find resolution. If, if after a few times you start to realize this is not gonna happen, you know, I like, if you, and by the way, you can't find resolution if they don't show up, right? That's the one that pisses you off the most. Yeah. If, they, if they stop, you go to the job site, they're not there, they don't call you, you try to reach out, they don't call you, and, and then they text you once, and on a Friday now, I'll call you Monday, I'll call you Tuesday, I'll see the job Tuesday, or hey, I'm sick, or hey, you know, you don't even know if they're telling the truth anymore. That's when it gets bad for you, because you start losing money, and that's when you start getting, but at some point, you may have to change the locks on your property, and just leave a note and say, we're done. Even if you're gonna lose money, you're already gonna lose money. So if you paid in advance, that's a whole different conversation, but if you paid in advance, shame on you. But if you did pay in advance, and they walk away, 
You'll never see that money again, so just move on. And one thing that Glenn's always been really good at, sometimes I can oh, even so get a little I'm more serious at. and stressed out about stuff, but um, when you are trying to find that conflict resolution or just trying to lighten a moment even, he has always been awesome at using humor, like to, to just like diffuse a situation. I'm thinking about the guys. There were there was there were guys that were fighting in our office one time. I think it was uh, well, I, forgot, I, no, I know the guy, but they they were fighting about something. I think it was a floor guy and a general guy, and they were fighting, and it got it got heated. And I'm there, and it got really heated. I <clears throat> it really was quiet, very awkward moment. I thought I looked out and said, "You guys want to hug or something?" <laughs> they're like, "What? What?" But I got their brain off on something else, and they kind of started laughing. I go, "Let's just hug it out, you guys." And they're like, "Shut up, man!" I'm like, "I know," but I got them thinking about something else for a minute. I got them to like to kind of diffuse the situation. So Humor is a great tool. Yeah, let's walk away from this and come back because at the end of the day, I just want my job done. I don't care if you guys like each other. I don't care if you do work in the future. I really don't care if we do work together anymore. I don't. What I want is my job done. Right? I'm gonna. I'm gonna go from there. I'm gonna find out that you mentioned something earlier about jobs. We have a. We have an interesting theory on why. Yeah. And contractors it's not have always a shelf true, life. But yeah, they have a shelf life. Yeah. I think that people, the contractors, want to work for themselves. Right. For us, when they come to work for us, one of the challenges is that we have work all the time. So. They kind of go from job to job to job to job. And we found that like four or five jobs seems to be their shelf life. Yep. My theory <clears throat> is on a couple of different areas. I, I think one, like Glenda said, they like to be their own boss and not work for someone. So when you go from job to job to job to job, it feels like you have a boss all of a sudden. Yep. You're working for the same person even though it's in a different house. And they so. kind of do with us because we have timelines <clears throat> and schedules and budgets and we have a project manager that's overseeing Benchmarks them. they have to meet. Yep. Yeah, so it's not it's not like they get to go to some kitchen and just kind of do what they want when they want to. Yeah, we're not mom and, job, <clears throat> mom and pop homeowner that's, yeah. you know. No, we're, then, we're running a business. <clears throat> the other thing I find is uh, sometimes greed can set in. So they don't, they don't yeah. know, they do quick math in their That's head. Sure. They don't really know all the calculations. So just for easy numbers, you know, let's say they find out we bought the house for $100,000. We paid them 20000 to do the labor, you know, another... 15 in materials so that's what a buck 35 whatever so that's a hundred thirty five thousand dollars and then we're selling it for 200 let's say so they think oh my gosh they're making sixty five thousand dollars and you know i mean i'm the one doing all the back yeah, breaking they even, work they don't even do that math <clears throat> their math is they bought it for a hundred they're selling, selling it for, for 200 two. right they don't so, even think about it. They only made 100 That's how they normally think they're not thinking about materials no. and labor and holding costs and buying and selling costs and all of that and i also want to say something else here too we're kind of, you know, being a little bit negative with dealing with contractors and stuff. Well, and we've with been all that, burned a lot right. over the years, a lot. But even with all that <clears> being <throat> said, it is hard, and contractors are probably the toughest part about our job, but it's still worth it. It's still better yeah. dealing with all of this headache and stuff for, well, uh, they're, instead they're, of saying... They're temporary they're temporary right. annoyances. It's still better than having to go to a nine to five job, and it's still better, sure. you know, the the freedom that we get yeah. and the when money. You, when you cash your check, right, and you make thirty, forty, fifty, eighty, a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollars on on a flip, it's still you look back and you sort of forget all the headaches right. that went along with it. Then um, the house is done and it looks good, and you have that pride of taking something that was ugly and turning it into something beautiful. So. It is hard, and there are headaches that come along with it. And Glenn and I are very, very transparent when it comes to that. We're, yeah. you know, even at our workshops, we tell people it's hard, but it's worth it. Yeah. So you know, not every day is roses and sunshine. You know, there are days you want to bury the contractor in the backyard in the new patio concrete. You know, but I think it's actually legal in some states now. <laughs> <laughs> so, anywho, so let's recap. We've been talking about contractors. I agree. <coughs> you you've got to have them as part of your job. And when you find a good one, hang on to them. Yeah. What you'll find is if you ask other flippers and say, hey, who's your contractor? If they have a good one, I'm sorry, they're not going to share it with you. No. Nope. Because it's so hard to find a good one that we have our really good ones that we hang on to. And so and we, have, we have some, right now, currently, as we're recording this, we have some great people. We have people. some good crews, yeah. We have some great crews. I see them out and about. They're doing their work. They're getting it done. They're within budget. They're, they're respectful. Um, they abide by our kind of our house rules. They're not, you know, hopefully not smoking on the, on the house and pouring Thin set down the drain, all this stuff we've dealt with with contractors, but we've got some really good ones out there. But you'll find that they're they're tough to find. But but again, like Amber said, they're worth it. And you're gonna have to, you know, what do they say? Kiss some frogs before you find your prince. I'm the prince now. I just want to make sure we're clear on that. that anyhow, so anyways, so um, let's recap. Yep, recap. So locate <clears throat> the, how to locate the best one. You're gonna interview them. You're gonna look for three qualities. You're gonna look for a good timeline, a good budget, and good quality. Um, you're going to make sure that they are legit, you know, make sure that they have all their insurances and crews and all that stuff in place. And you're going to hire 
slow and fire fast. Yep, and trust your gut on all this. And just remember that, yes, we've been ragging on them a lot through this this podcast today, but they they are necessary. And when you find a good one, treat them right and hang on to them. And hopefully they, they reciprocate and treat you the same way. And yeah. if you can have that mutual beneficial relationship, if you can have that, be- that I can't even say it, mutually beneficial relationship, your business will grow and you will be able to be more hands off as you build trust. But like, like anything, trust takes time. And so you have to have experiences to build on trust. So hopefully you can find some good ones. Sometimes it takes having some bad ones to really appreciate the good ones. Right. And I think that's that's been something that's helped us is just, we have so many bad experiences where we do find a good one. It's like, hey, this is a good person. This is a good guy. We're getting the right. work done here. So, right. Oh, good. All right. So what we do is help everyday people create wealth through real estate investing. And uh, you deserve to have an amazing life. So. Yeah. And deserve to, you deserve to do this the right way. So make sure that you have all of your ducks in a row too. So you're not driving yourself crazy. Yeah. Um, we are Glenn and Amber Schwarm. We are your host of the Real Estate of Mind show. If you have found value in this podcast, make sure that you review it. Not many people do that these days, it seems like. So make sure you review yeah. it. Make sure you share it with somebody that you think could get value out of it. Um, you can find us, Glenn and Amber Schwarm, on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and all those good places. So leave make a, sure you follow us. Leave a comment. We personally answer. We don't have we don't have a crew of people that does that for us. We do. We answer it ourselves. Right. We kind of enjoy doing that. Um, and we'd love to do that. So remember, everyday people really do create wealth through real estate investing. We have, and uh, you know, the only question is, will you be next? All right. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. See you soon. <laughs>